Welcome to the ninth of 13 SPSS video tutorials accompanying the first edition of the text Introduction to Statistics for Social Sciences. We will be using IBM SPSS Statistics version 19 for this tutorial. If you are running a different version of the software you may notice some slight differences. In this tutorial we will show you how to conduct a single sample t-test for the mean as is shown in chapter 9 of the textbook. For this tutorial, you will need the file Chapter 9 Video Tutorial Data.sav. This dataset consists of one variable which represents the individual grades on a math exam for 50 students. Suppose that a math teacher introduces a new type of technology in the math curriculum that is meant to increase student understanding of mathematical concepts. The teacher suggests that if the technology does increase student understanding, then the math exam grades should be statistically higher than the historical average when the technology was not used. You are now testing the alternative hypothesis that the population mean, which this sample of 50 came from, does not equal the historical average, which you are told is 70%. In other words, you are testing the hypothesis that the mean exam grade for these 50 students differs from 70%. To test this hypothesis, we need to conduct a single sample t-test of the mean. In SPSS, this is referred to as a one sample t-test. To get to the one sample t-test, we go to Analyze, Compare Means, and then One Sample T-Test. Once the one sample t-test window appears, we select our variable of interest and move it to the test variable area. Then in the test value field, we enter the known population value that we will test against the mean value of the math exam grade. Since the known population value is the historical average of 70%, we will enter 70 in this field. At this point, we can ignore the options button and just press OK to obtain the results. In the output we are provided with two tables. The first table provides us with the sample size, mean, standard deviation, and standard error of the mean. The second table provides us with the results of the single sample t-test. For our purposes we will ignore the 95 percent confidence interval of the difference as we will discuss that in another tutorial. At the top of this table, we can see that our test value, which is our known population value, is 70. Just below that, we see that the mean difference is 2.080. This is calculated as the sample mean of 72.08 minus the test value of 70. If you consider the equation for the t-test, which is on page 253 of the text, this difference value is the numerator in the equation. The standard error of the mean, which is the standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size, is the denominator in the equation. If we divide 2.080 by 1.038, we get the t value of 2.004 as shown here. SPSS tells us that we have 49 degrees of freedom which is the sample size minus 1. You may notice that the critical value of t is not provided in the output. Rather than providing the critical value, SPSS provides the two-tailed p-value, labeled as sig for significance, for the t-value. In Chapter 7, specifically on pages 200 and 201, we discuss the p-value of a z-score. The concept is the same here with the t-value in that we can say our test statistic has a p-value of 0.051. This tells us that the probability of obtaining a t-value as extreme as 2.004 or more is 5.1% when the null hypothesis is true. If we compare our p-value to our desired alpha value, we can determine whether to reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis of no difference. If the p-value is higher than our alpha value, this means that our t-value does not exceed the critical value of t. Similarly, if the p-value is lower than our alpha value, 
This means that our t value exceeds the critical value of t. That means that if the p-value is lower than our desired alpha value, we reject the null. And if the p-value is higher than our desired alpha, we fail to reject the null. This may sound a bit confusing, so imagine this green circle is our t-value. As the t-value moves further away from zero, either positively or negatively, its p-value gets lower. Since the alpha value represents the location of the critical value of t, once our t value exceeds the critical value, then the p value will be less than the alpha value. If you find this is still a bit difficult to remember, then start by remembering this. If the p value is less than alpha, we reject the null hypothesis. But if the p value is greater than alpha, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. So considering our hypothesis and a desired alpha value of 0 0.05, we fail to reject the null hypothesis because the p-value is greater than the alpha value. Therefore, we can say that the sample mean of 72.08 does not differ significantly from the historical average of 70. This brings us to the end of the SPSS video tutorial for Chapter 9. We hope that you have found this tutorial to be useful. In the next tutorial, we will look at how to conduct an independent sample t-test and paired sample t-test in SPSS.